Hello, Bezel Triple Three here. I wanted to speak to all you atheists and agnostics out there. It's been a while since I've done a video for you to look at and ponder, so I thought I would try something a little different. I want you to think about the reason you don't think that there is a God. Now, I know that you probably think it's because you are a rational, intelligent human being who has examined the evidence for the existence of God. And because of this examination, you've come to the conclusion that incredibly long periods of time and inconceivable odds of random events finally producing life best explain our existence in this world. I, however, would like to suggest a different reason why you don't have confidence in an infinite, personal being who has no beginning or end, who made all that there is out of nothing and is in control of all that he has made. The reason is that you do not have an understanding of the distinction between the Creator and the creature. You see, a misunderstanding of this distinction will inevitably lead to making yourself into God. By that, I mean a tendency to think that you are the final authority of determining reality. That man can figure out all that needs to be figured out. It also brings the dangerous misconception that you are accountable to no one, not even the God who made you. I don't think that is reality, and as a wise man once said, Reality is what you run into when you are wrong. So my atheist or agnostic friend, screw your courage to the sticking place and be willing to listen to a preacher speak on the story of Moses meeting God in the burning bush. You can find the story in Exodus 3, 1 through 12. It might just help you better understand the creature-creator distinction. Feel free to post comments as all are welcome. He must take off his shoes. He must, he must stand back. The Lord says, stand back. Stay away. Not because he's about ready to get burnt by the bush. You get burnt, you get too close, as we say to our children. Stand back, because this is a holy place, because I'm a holy God. I'm totally other. I'm inherently other, is what he's saying. And, and that he is God, and only he is God. You know, the greatest and most helpful line that you'll ever draw in your life is the line drawn between you and God. You might think, well, that's, they all want to draw closer to God. But to truly draw closer to God, you've got to first draw the line between yourself and God. And if we miss that drawing, that, that, that separation between creator and creature, between the worshipped and the worshiper, you will miss the gospel or at least much of it. You'll miss the necessity of the cross of Jesus Christ. You'll miss the fact of who you are as a creature here to serve Him, not yourself. You'll miss the understanding of who He really is. Blur or even deny that line. And the Bible will make no sense to you. It will seem like a harsh, terrible book. But because God is different from us, not like us, this basic truth about God we can start to understand him. The Lord, through the prophet Hosea, said, I am God, not man, the Holy One among you. Make it very clear. I am God, and you are not. And we think, would we get that? <laughs> Seems pretty basic. We struggle with that. We want to play God ourselves in our own lives. The Lord says you need to take a lesson. You need to take your sandals off. You need to hear the lesson. You need to stand back. That there's a real reason to stand back. And we struggle with that because, you know, in the New Testament, aren't we told to draw near? Certainly that's true. But I think it's interesting in the book of Hebrews, the very book that speaks so much about drawing near to the Lord and coming to the throne of grace is the same book that says that we are to worship God with reverence and awe. You see, in the, in the gospel that draws us even closer than anyone has come, even closer than Moses, it's still holding back, saying, there's a difference between me and you. And you've got to get this, or you won't understand me, the Lord is saying. And maybe this morning you're coming wondering if God cares about you. 
something has happened, someone has said something to you, something is bothering you this morning, or has been for some time, perhaps not 400 years, but it seems like it to you. Read this verse over and over again. If you ever doubt that God cares for his people, read this. This is the God. This is as much the God as the God who says, stand back. I'm holy. I'm different from you. You've got to get this. He's the same God that says, I love you. I see you where you are. I know your suffering. I know your pain. And I love verse 8. So I have come down to rescue you. Now we're told to read the scripture Christocentrically, aren't we? And we can't help but think of this coming down of the Lord. Ultimately that's true in the coming down of God becoming a man for us. It's the incarnation that ultimately this happens. But it starts here is that God is a God who comes down. He doesn't sit in heaven and just think about us or ache with us. But he comes down to us. We've got to get this. We've got to get this. That the gospel means that we bring things into other people's lives. We bring ourselves into other people's lives. Even as the Lord has come down, we come down to people and meet them where they are. Love them where they are. Because this is the God that is. And not only this, he, he promises not just to come down and take them out, but he promises to come down and take them out and bring them into something even greater. And this is, redemptively speaking, is what happens when the Lord brings us. The land, you see, is a symbol of heaven. The land is a symbol of what the Lord will ultimately do. He'll fill the earth with his glory. It won't just be that little portion of real estate in the Middle East that everybody's so crazy about today. It's going to go wider than that. It's going to fill the whole earth, the whole cosmos. Help my